Hey everyone, welcome, welcome to the stream. Just waiting for a few people to join. Kaise ho yaar? How are you? I am filled with energy today. I don't have water with me right now, so I'm gonna probably have a dry mouth. If I go out, then please excuse me. So how are you guys? What are you doing on a Saturday evening? And uh, uh, before we start, just like the video, also share it. Uh, I see a lot of people on my Instagram. They say that you know they're gonna come and watch the live stream. Uh, they push notifications that notify them, obviously. But see who's here now? Just a few people. So let let me know in the chat who you are, where are you from, and if you're excited or not. Today uh, we are going to cover organization structure. It's a very interesting topic. Uh, if you were in the last stream uh, where we discussed organization schemes then this is one step above uh, after that so people who haven't watched those videos or that video you can like watch this video it's not that you will not understand it but you'll understand it better if you know those concepts well so if you don't ha haven't already watched the previous streams uh, i have added a playlist in the description down below you can just click and uh, watch all the topics that are covered so far so um, and uh, to the people who are watching this for the first time uh, i have time i have linked this like sorry to the people who are watching this after the live i have linked everything in the timestamps below so you can directly go to the section that you want to watch okay so let's go to the topic which is organization structure uh what do you think is an organization structure uh, let me know in the comment if you are watching live uh, in the chat, if you're watching live, or let me know in the comment what you think is an organization structure. What I'm saying, organize, organization structure. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, an organization structure is basically how you define relationship between pieces of content, various pieces of content. Uh, let me show you uh, with an example. So, the. Uh, Okay. Okay. Uh, let me explain. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just mul uh, handling multiple screens. Uh, so, uh, you know, when I started to cook for the first time, uh, I went to my kitchen and I wasn't familiar with how things are organized in the kitchen because you don't generally when you don't cook. <laughs> uh, I couldn't find anything uh, like literally anything, be it masala, oil, cookware, anything. Uh, I tried looking at multiple places, but I failed because I didn't know what was the basic organization organization structure of the kitchen because my mom was the one who used to handle it based on her preferences and experience, right? Uh, so I tried a lot, but I, ultimately I had to call her to find my stuff. Uh, but if there were if if the things were kept in a more uh, focused way. Or in a way where uh, uh, I don't know, in a more focused way or in an organized way, I would have maybe predicted where things would be, right? So yeah, that's what organization structure does. Uh, let me tell you uh, again. As I mentioned last last uh, in the last stream, I covered organization scheme, and today we are covering organization structure. There is a big difference between them. Mm. Organization scheme is basically it groups content based on their characteristics or logic, right? And organization structure groups content based on hierarchy and defining where it belongs, right? So when you talk about organization schemes, the content can be similar or not similar, but they follow a common theme. Like for example, uh, I showed an example of how I organize files in my folder, right? When you click on, when you right click and sort items, you can either sort them by date, uh, created name, file type, etc. So they are not the same files, but they follow a common theme. But in an organization structure, it's different. Uh, in organization structure, you basically organize all these different organization scheme into a structure. Uh, I'll show you what I'll show you an example, but right now that's the basic difference between an organization scheme and structure scheme focuses on specific content structure focuses on how you group that individual schemes and guys, I can see there are five people here, but there is only one live. Both, both nine 
प्लीज़ डू लाइक दिस वीडियो जो भी वीडियो में आ रहा है सबसे पहले लाइक करो एंड देन प्लीज़ ऑल्सो राइट समथिंग इन द चैट यार चैट खाली खाली लग रही है सोना सोना नहीं लगना चाहिए कूल लेट्स मूव ऑन सो इन द लास्ट वीडियो वी डिस्कस थ्री ऑर्गेनाइजेशन स्कीम्स ये हेल्प करती हैं इन्फॉर्मेशन को कैटेगराइज करने में और ग्रुप करने में और यूजर्स को समझने में uh, कि वो क्या देख रहे हैं राइट आफ्टर डूइंग डूइंग दिस द क्वेश्चन अराइज लाइक हाउ विल यूजर फाइंड दिस इन्फॉर्मेशन लाइक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन स्कीम से कर तो दिया बट उनको ढूंढेंगे कैसे राइट वी डू दिस बाई यूजिंग ऑर्गेनाइजेशन स्ट्रक्चर राइट एंड देन देर आर थ्री काइंड ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन स्ट्रक्चर वन इज हायरिकल डेटा बेस मॉडल एंड हाइपर टेक्सट तो अब तक क्या होता जा रहा है अब तक आई एम जस्ट सेंग लाइक पुटिंग थिंग्स आउट देयर जस्ट कीप दम इन माइंड From this point onwards, I'll go deep into each of these organization structure, and I'll give you more examples. I'll I'll explain you what these are and when to use uh, each and also advantage and disadvantage. So, still uh, again saying, if you haven't watched the last video, which is organization schemes, you can watch this video. But if you don't understand anything, do mention what your question is in the chat or in the comment below. Where, however, you are watching it. Great. Uh, the first is hierarchy organization. <clears throat> so uh, it's effortless. Uh, basically, hierarchy organization is when you create some top level categories or hierarchies, and you put your content into individual ones, right? So basically, top level पे आप क्या करते हो? You create some five six categories. You say कि मेरे website या मेरे product पे ये छह ये चार पांच actions ले सकता है user या ये चार पांच चीजें कर सकता है. and you then start putting content in it right now it's effortless right and the only thing you need to do is create categories and shift content if in future sorry if in future you need to add more content to a different category you just create a new category right it's very simple so these are hierarchy hierarchical structures right so and hierarchical structures follow a top down approach right like you create the top level structures first and then you add sub categories sub categories sub sub categories and then content right so that's how a hierarchy system works now let me show you some examples of a hierarchical structure because these are the structures that we see every day these are the most basic way to organize things so in the example that you are seeing right now uh, it's a hierarchical structure you have one parent and everything else is a child or a sub child so this is one example of a hierarchical structure uh another example is flipkart right you can see top nine from top offers to beauty and toys uh, just below that blue bar uh, there are uh, top nine top level uh, navigation and if i select let's say electronics uh, if i hover on electronics uh, it has further children right and if you uh, further on click on let's say uh, computer peripherals you get further more categories right so you see that there is one hierarchy then next then next और क्या पता when you select printers uh, इसमें और भी हों मतलब वैसे नहीं है पर हो सकती हैं right you can have more more and more uh, categories so this is how you create hierarchical structures uh, so in hierarchical organization schemes there are different ways you can structure content uh, अब hierarchical so <laughs> uh, I know it's, it's it's a bit funny now I realize it hierarchical structure के भी डिफरेंट टाइप्स होते हैं सो देर आर हायर आर की अंडर हायर आर की यू नो आई डोंट नो इफ यू गेट द जोक आर नॉट सो द फर्स्ट काइंड ऑफ हायर आर्कल स्ट्रक्चर इज अ सिक्वेंशियल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन राइट कॉन्टेंट इज एज द नेम्स इज सिक्वेंशियल स्ट्रक्चर आर वेयर द कॉन्टेंट इज अरेंज ग्रुप और कैटेगराइज टू फॉलो फिक्स स्टेप्स और सिक्वेंस सो द वेरी बेसिक एग्जाम्पल ऑफ दिस इज गूगल फॉर्म्स Uh, I'm sorry. This is not supposed to be here. Uh, technical glitches. Sorry, guys. Uh, delete. Can you hear? Okay. Yeah. So uh, this is the sign-up form of uh, Dropbox, and forms are the best example of uh, sequential structures because the content is placed one after another, and you have to fill that uh, in the same hierarchy. I mean, you can fill different information, but generally. फॉर्म्स को डिजाइन इस तरीके से किया जाता है कि फर्स्ट इन्फॉर्मेशन जो आपको चाहिए वो आप पहले लेते हो देन अगेन देन एक्स देन नेक्स्ट देन नेक्स्ट एंड व्हेन एवरीथिंग इज डन यू हैव अ फाइनल कॉल टू एक्शन 
जिस पर क्लिक करके यूजर्स नेक्स्ट स्टेप पर चले जाते हैं राइट तो फॉर्म्स आर द बेस्ट वे ऑफ बेस्ट एग्जाम्पल ऑफ अ सिक्वेंशियल हायरिकल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन स्ट्रक्चर वट डू वी हैव नेक्स्ट द नेक्स्ट इज ट्री ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो ट्री ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज द सेकेंड काइंड ऑफ हायरिकल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन स्ट्रक्चर द टी ट्री स्ट्रक्चर इज अगेन इट्स अगेन द मोस्ट कॉमन आई शोड जस्ट एन एग्जाम्पल दिस इज अ ट्री स्ट्रक्चर सो आई शोड द सेम एग्जाम्पल टू शो ऑर्गेनाइजेशन स्ट्रक्चर ट्री स्ट्रक्चर में भी यही होता है देर आर अ लॉट ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन पेरेंट एंड द टॉप लेवल देन मोर देन मोर देन मोर सो इट काइंड फॉर्म्स लाइक अ ट्री जैसे फैमिली ट्री होता है ना आपके दो पेरेंट होते हैं फिर उनके पे उनके चिल्ड्रेन होते हैं फिर उनके चिल्ड्रेन होते हैं सो ट्री इज अ बेसिकली अ पेरेंट चाइल्ड रिलेशनशिप टाइप ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन स्ट्रक्चर एंड द लास्ट काइंड ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हायरिकल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन स्ट्रक्चर इज मेट्रिक्स ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इफ सम ऑफ यू कैन गेट बाय द नेम अ मेट्रिक स्ट्रक्चर कैन बी क्रिएटेड बाय लिंकिंग वेरियस पेजेस एंड और कॉन्टेंट आइदर इंटरनली लाइक विद इन अ प्रोडक्ट और एक्सटर्नली आउटसाइड द प्रोडक्ट डूइंग सो इट अलाउज अस टू डेटरमाइन द पाथ टू द इंफॉर्मेशन Uh, which is not fixed so uh, it it depends upon the user how do they want to reach to a particular information uh, there is no particular defined sequence in the sequential organization structure or a hierarchy like the tree organization structure uh, so with with this pattern basically you can create a much more diverse much more richer experience because uh, you have you, when you put uh, information out there uh it's easier for the user to navigate based on their interests uh so <clears throat> the question is why does hierarchy organization work <clears throat> first of all uh if everything is clear uh, so far uh if there is any question just mention the chat or the comments below uh if anything that i missed or you don't understand any me or you found anything that i'm speaking very ambiguous uh not direct do let me know uh, i'll i'll surely clear that up so now now let's understand why does hierarchy organization work right uh, because we observe hierarchy every day and we are a part of it it can be your family social groups society workplace or wherever you think since the beginning of time uh, hierarchies have been created and followed uh, and essentially hierarchies have helped us in understanding and identifying our relationship with others and our place in the society right and therefore uh, if it's done right hierarchical structure becomes easy to create understand and navigate uh but certainly there are advantages and disadvantages of hierarchy organization so let's discuss those now uh the first advantage is, is the top down approach uh, of the hierarchy structure uh, allows you to quickly handle websites scope Uh, without going into excessive uh, content inventory like you don't have to uh, go into the depths of what content already exists on your platform you can just create quick top level categories and start putting elements and information uh, in those categories as you seem fit if you don't think uh, a certain uh, content can be placed in any of the above mentioned then you can create a new category and add that right uh and you can begin identifying major content areas uh by exploring the organization structure uh and i don't know what that means i have written it <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah so basically structure uh, it, it it's easier to create structure uh using an uh, using a hierarchical structure now what are the disadvantages and as you see there are a lot of disadvantages of a hierarchical organization uh first is you have to be sensitive of the breadth of the hierarchy by breadth means the amount the number of options that you give to the user uh you have to be sensitive because <coughs> human minds have cognitive limits right you can't consume a lot of information uh and i'm sure you have heard about miller's law if you don't if you haven't miller's law state that uh if you have to put out information it's much more memorable and uh, uh, recognize uh, sorry not recognizable recallable uh, then for a user if 
they lie between uh, a number of 7 plus minus 2. So if you have 5 to 7 elements for a user to remember, they generally it, it's, it is generally easier for them to remember it. But in the past, people forget 4 digits, right? So, you know, 7 plus, plus minus 2 is it's a, it's a very, uh, what do you say, uh, ambitious number, right? So, and if you present like 5, 6 information, uh, it's very difficult for a user to uh, remember all those options or even choose between those options. Like if, if I show an example of Flipkart, they have 9 options. Uh, now, although they have nine options, which is more than, uh, which is, which comes in the range of seven plus minus two, uh, they have represented it very well. Like they have images to go with every single, uh, navigation item. And I've covered this thing in my principles of organization structure. And this principle is called principle of exemplar, wherein when you create a category name, you show an example in form of a text or a picture. So users can relate what other information is there in a certain category so they can predict. So they have used the principle of exemplar and this uh, Miller's law and use them to create a nine item organization structure, hierarchical organization structure, right? Uh, and so the next uh, disadvantage, so you have to create the bread, like uh, any more than the in like nine or 10 elements, uh, you will, uh, the users will get very much confused and they might exit out of your uh, website. Uh, another thing is not just uh, breadth, you have also have to consider the depth of the information because if the user have to click five levels down to reach to the one piece of information, it can be very frustrating for them. And again, they leave, right? So while designing for hierarchical structures, be aware uh, that you have to be uh, very conservative about the breadth and the depth. Uh, also these categories should be mutually exclusive that, like they, they can't have similar elements because uh, if you add similar uh, elements in both of the hierarchies user first of all will get confused where they should go to find a specific information if they find the same information in both the places uh, yeah so you have to be you have to make sure that these categories are mutually exclusive they don't contain same content or even if there is an overlap, the overlap is very, very less. Uh, and talking about including things in different categories, uh, there will be some content that has to be flexible, right? For example, uh, tomatoes, tomato is a fruit and a vegetable. So where would you put it in fruits or vegetables? Some people even call it berries, right? Those small cherry tomatoes, they can even go into berry category. So if there is a vegetable e-commerce website, where would you put tomatoes in vegetable fruits or berries? Uh, and you can't, uh, you can't have a lot of elements with a, a lot of intersection like this, because if you do, uh, then cross listed elements, uh, then again, confuse the user and hierarchy loses its value because the user thinks that everything is, uh, available everywhere. Okay. Let me turn off the AC. So yeah, these are the disadvantages. Now, uh, the next is database model, but before going into database model, if you have any questions about, uh, what we have covered so far, uh, just let me know. Oh, do we like, did we have, oh my God, I think, uh, my presentation was not <laughs> visible. Oh, I'm so sorry guys. I'm so sorry for this. Uh, I have screwed up. So yeah, before going into database model, uh, just do let me know if you have uh, any more questions. My God, I have done such a big screw up, man. <laughs> koi baat nahi, koi baat nahi. I might have to redo this live again. Cool. Uh, I see no questions in the chat. Uh, okay. So database model, let's come to database model. Uh, 
I'll also link this presentation that I have uh, in the comments down below. Sorry, no comment in the description down below below the like button. So you can f uh, find this presentation and uh, see what all I have missed. My God, I have seen so many examples here. <laughs> I've screwed up, man. Anyways, never mind. Moving on. Uh, cool. So uh, another kind of database structure is called uh, another kind of database. What the fuck, dude? Another kind of uh, another kind of organization scheme. Organization structure is called a database model, but uh, uh, firstly, for the people who are not from technical or tech 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 background, let me explain the concept of database. Uh, others who know it can skip this whole section. I have linked this video in the timestamp below, so you can move, go on, and go to other sections. So uh, there is a thing called DBMS, which is called database management system. Uh, a DBMS uh, is basically a technology that helps us to store large sets of data in a way that's quickly and easily searchable. Uh, and data is stored in a form of tables uh, and the tables in the form of rows and columns, uh, similar to what you see in Excel or Google Sheets. Or sometimes uh, data is also uh, saved in a form of CSV, comma separated files, but that is something uh, that you don't have to get into very much details. Just, just uh, understand that DBMS is basically where you store data and it's easily searchable and findable. Right. And then there's a type of database management system, which is called a relational database management system. Uh, now in relational database management system, you create relations between these, uh, data types, uh, to give you an example, uh, let's say when you have to, uh, provide an example or uh, pro when you have to reset your password, right? When you click on forgot password and reset a password, the system generally needs your email address, uh, your mobile number, and you might have to get, a, uh, you might also are being sent with an OTP that you have to enter in the system, right? So when all these three, three things match, a new password link is generated. When you enter a new password, then that new password is replaced by the old password in the, in the database. And now, your pass, your email, phone number, password is linked with your account information, right? So you see how the database, how the relationship is being built between all these basic data types, right? So, uh, that's the, that's the basic idea of database. Uh, it's an important, uh, concept to understand. Uh, so before we, we actually discussed uh, the database model, I think we have a question in the chat. I just, uh, looked at it. Uh, let's look at what the question is. Okay. The question is, uh, is, is there any new way of categorizing attributes or only way is what most websites are using right now, which means left hand, left hand side filters. Uh, see, you can, uh, organize content however you like, uh, and basically how your users use your data. There is something called Jacob's law, uh, which says that make your website similar to how all the websites on the internet are. So users can understand, uh, uh, so user can use them because they know how to interact with different websites. So that is why some websites, uh, use filters on the left, but a lot of websites use filters in, in a different way. If you go to website, uh, such as housing.com, they have a different uh, way in which uh, they use filters. But if you go to 99acres.com, which is also a property search website, they have filters on the left hand side. So you can organize the information in any way. The important point being you have to organize information. Like you have to collect, create a collection that makes sense to the user. Uh, I don't know if I answered your question. If I did, then please mention in the chat. So let's, uh, go to the let's continue where we left. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, again, this is a relational database, uh, model. Now, uh, there are two more concepts, uh, that I want you to uh, understand before we continue. Uh, one is called, uh, metadata, which simply means data about data. So if you listen to a song, uh, a metadata will be, uh, as you see on the Spotify link, uh, the metadata would be, why is there this dribble link on every single page, man? Delete this. 
yeah <clears throat> so uh, where was i yeah uh, metadata so so the metadata of this song is the artist name the year it was released uh, the duration of the song the singer the artist the album etc all this is metadata so and so when you uh, store this information in a database you would store every single uh, information about this song in forms of uh, rows and columns so that's metadata and uh, the second thing is entity relationship diagram which are uh, otherwise called er diagrams uh, now uh, i'll uh, so when we create a database we have a lot of information right because a database doesn't just, just doesn't have uh, one idea uh one idea sorry one uh, data it has a lot of information you know, like millions of information and because it is stored in rows and columns and you have to create relationship between these columns uh sometimes it get difficult to track which data has a uh, relationship with which data and to solve that problem engineers and developers came up with a uh, solution where they visually represent all these information so it's easier to understand which data is related to what uh i'll show you an example also but i've also uh, linked the video uh, wait a minute oh where is the rest of this where is the rest of okay Uh, wait a minute guys there has been some uh mistake um kuch to hua hai kuch ho gaya hai just bear with me guys there is something that is going on in the background somehow my presentation is not working let me fix it's a technical glitch guys uh anyways uh what's up what are you doing uh <clears throat> how are things going on just let me do a quick check of what has happened mm my cloud drive Yeah, things are fixed now. I almost had a <laughs> mini, not a, not a heart attack, <laughs> a mini surprise, if you if you call it, right? Uh, yeah, so let's continue where we left. I'm sorry for this small glitch. Uh, I'm a noob streamer, guys. I'm a noob streamer. What can we do? Yeah, so we were talking about uh, ER diagrams. So I have uh, linked a video in the description below the like button. You can go and uh, that video will explain better. of what an uh, er diagram is uh and to show you an example are uh, yaar what is this what what's this happening uh this is an er diagram if you see what you see on the screen screen so you see that uh, how various elements have uh, are are combined all together uh uh sorry for the technical glitches guys again uh great yeah so uh, this is an entity relationship diagram or er diagram you see that uh, the delivery id and the order uh, delivery how how all these uh, data points are related to each other so this is a basically an er diagram not to go into depth it's just a concept that i wanted to uh, teach, uh, walk you through so you understand the database model actually right so uh, the reason you had to uh, understand all those concepts uh, metadata and all those concepts is because uh, uh, a database organization structures follows a similar structure of, of as a database would uh, the various contents are interlinked uh, via metadata 
and the reason we talked about ER diagrams is because uh, when you create an IA using a DB model, it looks like an ER model. Uh, so uh, now, should we talk about advantages and disadvantages? Okay. Uh, so I don't have any example for you to show uh, how an ER model database looks like in the real world. Uh, but uh, I'll find it and I'll uh, put it on my Instagram if I do. Uh, what is this happening here? Yeah. Why are so much so much glitches happening? Right. Uh, so yeah, so the advantages of a, uh, advantages of an organize, uh, the advantage <laughs> of a uh, database model, uh, structure is because is that, uh, the search is extremely easy because that's what a database model do. Uh, and for the websites with a lot of content, this organization structure is, uh, very beneficial. Uh, the second is, uh, because the final IA looks something like an ER diagram and we now understand what an ER diagram is, it becomes easier for information architects or the designer who is building an IA information architecture. It gets easier for them to communicate with your developer friends because now you also understand how your, uh, IA information architecture will be translated into code, into a database actual database that the developers had to code, have to code. And how will they create an ER uh, relationship? So when you give an already created ER relationship to them, it the, the task becomes very easier because they don't have to start from scratch again. Uh, another big, big advantages of uh, database model organization structure is that uh, it enables us to repurpose the same content in the multiple form and different format for different audiences. Uh, one very good example for this is, uh, our own Netflix. Uh, so you can't clearly see in this screen, but sometimes you can see same kind of content appearing in popular trending and top 10, like the same show appearing in all these different, uh, categories. How is that done via, because they have something, uh, like an organization because they have something like an organization uh, some, something like a database organization system. Uh, uh, and that way they can do all these things. <clears throat> uh, now let's talk about some disadvantages. Uh, the relationship between, uh, metadata and elements can be quite complex and defining and mapping these, uh, relationships requires a significant skill and technical understanding. So, uh, as you have already noticed, these terms are actually very technical. So there is a, if, if you are not from a technical background, then it can be a little bit of a friction when you create a, a database model organization scheme structure, structure, I mean structure, uh, and, uh, also uh, the, the database model is useful when you uh, apply it with homogeneous subset, like when the things are same, like in Netflix example, all, all of these are videos, but if you have to also combine video and audio or let's say visual or graphics, then it becomes a little bit difficult because uh, a user might not be able to understand why as these two different elements are grouped together in, in such a way, right? So these are the disadvantages of a database model. Uh, and just like uh, I mentioned a few slides ago that uh, hierarchical structures are a top-down approach and database model is a bottom-up approach. So in a top-down approach, again, you create top hierarchies and put element, uh, put information in them. But in bottom-up approach, the content defines how your categories will be formed. Uh, and what is, and if, if, is there even a need of so many categories? Like, if, so that's how, uh, that is what bottom up approach is. Uh, do we have, do I have an example? One example of a bottom up approach is the photos app in your, uh, phone or the contacts app in your phone, right? Uh, 
the photos app would be a very good example because uh, the photos actually define the type of categories that is made. So, so with uh, apps like Google uh, Google Photos, they they group your photos uh, in in specific ways uh, that is defined by the photos like via location, uh, via date taken, or via some up to via people like who who all are in that photo. If you have a pet, then all the photos of your pets will be grouped uh, uh, in one way and all the information on a particular date are grouped a particular trip are booked uh, grouped in one way so they are very much very more dynamic and the content defines what categories will be formed so that is bottom approach approach and hierarchies are top down approach and <clears throat> the last type of uh, organization structure is called a hypertext organization structure and again uh, before I continue what uh, a hypertext organization structure is, uh, let me explain what a hypertext is. Basically, if you have ever came to Google, all these links in blue color that you see are called hypertext. Uh, any type of text uh, or media or sound or link that is clickable that takes you from one page to another is called a hypertext. Uh, so that's what hypertext means. So uh, a hypertext organization structure is uh, an organization structure which is which basically links uh, whole different pages uh, from various sources to one uh, page uh, if, if you see in the photo there is you you might be able to understand this with example uh, a, a hypertext system basically involves two things one is uh, called item and one is called information that is to be linked so uh, but uh, currently i haven't seen any product that uses a hypertext model earlier there were some uh, one example that comes close to hypertext model is wikipedia or any website that is a wiki that contains a lot of information uh, or all those uh, what do you say notion uh, documents that people do public Basically, they have a whole links of text where you can click and they take you to another page. <clears throat> so they group content, uh, which uh, is grouped in a way that is consumable to you, that makes sense together. But each, in, each individual uh, link takes you to a different page, which has a different kind of organization. Like one click will take you to an article, another might take you to a YouTube playlist and stuff like that. So basically, you see how different text is connecting with different kind of content. This is an example of hypertext uh, <coughs> organization schemes. Uh, another example of hypertext organization scheme is uh, when uh, we had this, uh, like I used to subscribe to some uh, tech books, Digit was the one uh, digit magazine that I used to subscribe to and they had this CDs that comes which had software, the PDF version of that file. Uh, some articles, some videos in it and they had a custom uh, op, what do you say software in it where uh, each what do you say each uh, link would take me to a different section so that is a kind of uh, if you have ever used uh, some kind something like that that's an example of a hypertext organization scheme but currently I, I don't have an example of a, a hypertext uh, a, a real product that we use every day or we have heard of that uses a hypertext model. Okay, so let's come on to the advantages and disadvantages. Uh, advantages is it's, it provides excellent flexibility uh, and information can be highly interlinked. The disadvantage being uh, it presents uh, complexity and confusion to the user because if they don't because they have to come to a product, uh, come to a page and then click on something to go to a different page where the actual information is, right? So why are you, why, why was I here at the first place? So that's one thing that uh, can be uh, like, why am I doing this for the user, right? Uh, and another thing is because you are going out of context, right? To consume the actual data, you might get lost uh, after some time and I'm sure if you have ever, have ever used Wikipedia it might have happened to you once that when you are reading something there is a link 
you don't understand uh, the meaning of the word or the phrase that they have used so they have provided a link to a other separate article on wikipedia you go to that link then you start reading about that you don't understand something there is a link another link of a word is highlighted you don't know its meaning you click on that you go to another wikipedia article and after a few <laughs> few uh, like clicks you think like where was i at the first place and now you are completely lost and you have to recall that where did you start from and then go back to that page and then it continues so <laughs> So the user might get lost when you use a hypertext scheme. So I have to make sure that doesn't happen if you work with a hypertext scheme. Now, uh, let me quickly add some points to remember. Uh, uh, a site with only three, four pages can get away with minor organization because the content is restricted, uh, but still regardless, an excellent organization scheme uh, is always helpful for the user. The second thing is, uh, while it's essential to consider the best structure for your content, uh, regardless of how large or small your website is, uh, it becomes much more critical as the size of the website increases or the size of the content increases. Uh, it may be beneficial, the third thing, sorry, is it may be beneficial to use one organization system over the another but using the using all three in a complementary manner will be much more valuable for your user. And if you see all the websites, uh, all the examples that I show you, uh, Flipkart housing, all these use a high hybrid, like a, 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 a complementary organization scheme. They don't just stick to just hierarchical or just DB model. They, they use multiple organization schemes. Uh, and, uh, the last thing is one thing that is very common is uh, the topmost level will always be hierarchical uh, in most of the product. Uh, and if you don't believe me, you can go to any particular website and see the top level will always be hierarchical and the bottom level will have a mixture of hierarchical organization, hierarchical uh, database and hypertext model. Uh, so yeah, and the last thing which is very important is whenever you are designing these organization structure, make sure you keep the scope of growth. Don't restrict your organization structure uh, in a way, in any way that it has difficulty in growing. Uh, hierarchical organizations are very easy. They are the most uh, easy way to grow. Uh, DB models, then again, because the content, content decides what organization uh, structure sh you should use, uh, it's much more, it's, it's much better because the content restricts you to create further diversification if it's not needed. Uh, but yeah, if you're create, going with a hierarchical organization, you have to be very conscious of uh, how you have to scale because you have to understand the Miller's law as well, right? You can't have a depth, uh, a wider and a very deep organization structure. Right, so that was it guys. Uh, I have a small task for you. Uh, and the task is, uh, you have to evaluate any website or mobile app and try to identify their organization structure. What are they using? Right. Uh, and when you do make sure you either, uh, comment down below or DM me on Instagram and we'll start a conversation around if you identified correctly or not. The intent here is to learn, not to correct, identify correctly, but to learn what product is using, what kind of organization scheme or what kind of organization structure. And when you do that, you'll actually be able to understand how big, big products group information, how they think of organizing all these information. And when you are organizing content, when you are building products, you will also think of all these uh, attributes, variables very consciously. And you will have strong reason to say why a certain content needs to be grouped in a certain way and in a certain structure. So that is it from my end guys. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, let's switch to the camera. Cool. If you have any questions, just let me know in the chat or in the comments below. <clears throat> uh, so I don't see any questions. Anyways, uh, that's it. That's all for the session guys. Uh, if you found this helpful, then share it with someone who can benefit from it. Share it with your friends, colleagues, families, anywhere and anyone, uh, 
and I have also linked some great articles and recommendation reads and some good books about information architecture in the description down below. Do give them a read and you'll, you'll, you'll be very, it, it, they'll be very beneficial from you. And if you're here for the first time, my name is Manamadan. Uh, I'm a designer and a researcher based out of New Delhi, India. And I share resources, industry insights, best practices, and even bring in as design experts on the channel so we can learn from them how to be a better designer and how to grow and pivot our career. So that's all for now. Until next time, this is Manamadan. You are watching UX and more. Chenkwee.